What's going on everybody, it's your boy Nurse Bass. I'm back with another video and in this one we're gonna talk about dosage calculation. This was video requested by Becky Shelton and she said, hey Nurse Bass, would you be willing to do a video on how to read a drug calculation question and pick out what's important to the question and what isn't? And then she goes on. But that's basically what I wanna do in this one. This isn't gonna necessarily be a video that is going to cover exactly how to do conversions. I'm gonna to touch on it as I do problems with you guys. But this is more so to give you guys questions and help you decipher what within the question is important and what you need to pay attention to whenever you're answering these questions. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. All right guys, so our first question, I wanna keep it simple and give you a nice little easy introduction into a dosage calculation question. Our order is how much the doctor has asked us or you know prescribed to their patient. Zithromax 1500 milligrams PO by mouth. Our supply that we have on hand is Zithromax 500 milligram tablets. The question is how many tablets should the nurse administer? So what you can do is you can look at your supply. You have 500 milligram tablets, which means one tablet equals 500 milligrams. And what you need is 15, what your patient needs is 1500 milligrams. So how could we do this? Here's one way you can do it. You can say, you can say one tablet is equal to 500 milligrams. And then you know what you need is 1500 milligrams. Since milligrams is on the bottom, make sure you put milligrams on the bottom over here. So 1500 milligrams is what you need. And how many tablets is it? That's the whole question. So you're gonna put like an X up here. So what you know is over here on the left, you've got your supply. And on the right, you've got your order. Okay? So our supply says one tab equals 500 milligrams. And over here, we have ordered 1500 milligrams. And the question is asking us how many tabs is it? So all that you do here is you want to cross multiply. 500 times X is 500X equals, and then you're gonna do 1500 times one, which is 1500. And then you're going to divide by 500 on both sides, giving you X equals three tabs. And that is your answer. Let's move on to the next question. Now this question is a bit different. This is a kilogram question, and you will get these on every dosage calculation test you take. So our order, heparin 10 units per kilogram, and our patient weighs 60 kilograms. And our supply here is heparin 25,000 units per 500 milliliters. How many units should the nurse give? First thing I would do in dissecting this question is look at the order. Whenever you have a kilogram question, you're gonna have a, a, uh, a unit of measurement here. It could be 10 units, it could be two milligrams, whatever it might be, per kilogram. And then here it says patient weighs 60 kilograms. Now they could have just as easily given you their weight in pounds and made you convert it to kilograms, but here it's already given for you. So what we know is that our patient needs 10 units per kilogram of body weight and they weigh 60 kilograms. So the easy way to do this is if they need 10 units per one kilogram and they weigh 60 kilograms, and remember your kilograms is on the bottom, so you put it on the bottom over here, how many total units do they need? Remember we cross multiply, one times X is X and 60 times 10 is 600. So what they need is a total of 600 units. And the question asked, how many units should the nurse give? So at that point, you know that you have your answer. Now, if this question, let's go back in here and say that they didn't ask how many units that you needed, but instead they wanted to know how many milliliters should your patient receive? Now, if we look at it from that way, how many milliliters should they receive? Okay, well here, what we know that we have is 25, the supply is 25,000 units per 500 milliliters. So let's go down here. 25,000 units, 25,000 units per 500 milliliters. And we know that the total amount of units that our patient is supposed to receive is 600 units. Units is up top, so we can put 
units up top over here. And the question now asks, how many milliliters should they receive? Well, we don't know, so let's put the X there. And here we'll cross multiply. 25,000 times X equals 25,000 X. And then 500 times 600 gives you a total of 300,000. And it's at this point that you're going to divide by 25,000 on both sides, leaving you with, we'll put an arrow up here, X remaining on the left, and then 300,000 divided by 25,000 leaves you with 12. 12 milliliters is how many milliliters the nurse should give. So whether it had asked how many units, well, all that you, the only information that you needed was what was up here, the order, because that's where we started at, right? 10 units per kilogram, they weigh 60 kilograms. 10 times 60 equals 600, that's how many units they need. Or if the question had asked how many milliliters should the nurse give, well then, not only would you have answered that initial question here, but then you would also have to move on to the milliliter portion because that's what the question is asking. Now in this particular question, we have an order for row seven at 600 milligrams and they want it to run over 45 minutes. Your supply is row seven, 600 milligrams in 100 milliliters. And the question asks, how fast should the nurse set the pump? So this is a question regarding a IV pump. And these are different than other dosage calculation questions. So how do we approach this? First thing that you need to know, this is just knowledge that you have to know in order to answer this type of question. Whenever we're talking about pumps, IV pumps, you always set an IV pump in milliliters per hour, always. So if what we're talking about is how fast should the nurse set the pump, then you already know that your answer is gonna need to be in milliliters per hour. So that's, that's the first step. That's the first little key piece of information that you need to decipher because the question didn't ask in what units do they want their answer. They assume that you knew that a pump is going to require milliliters per hour. So now that we have that piece of information, we can proceed. Whenever we're looking at this, since we know that it's milliliters per hour, we don't even need to worry about these milligrams. It's not asking you that. Don't even worry about it. It's just asking how fast you should set the pump in milliliters per hour. So what you know is that, okay, your order was 600 milligrams, your supply was 600 milligrams, so you're good. So what you're gonna have is a 100 milliliter bag of fluid and they want it to run over 45 minutes. So what we do is we're gonna have 100 milliliters of fluid over 45 minutes. And basically you're gonna get a long number, a bunch of twos. Now what this is, is 2.222 milliliters per minute because we have milliliters on top and we have minutes on the bottom but we need it in milliliters per hour. So how do we convert this to milliliters per hour? Well, we know, and this is just information that you should know, in one hour, there are 60 minutes. So in order to get 60 on the bottom, we need to times this bottom by 60. And if whatever you multiply the bottom by, you also have to multiply the top by. So basically, you're gonna multiply this entire thing by 60 on the top and by 60 on the bottom. And whenever you do that, it's gonna roughly give you 133 milliliters per hour. Really, it's like 133.33. We just rounded down to 133 milliliters per hour. And that is how you would answer a question about an IV pump. Okay, this next question. The nurse hangs a new 1000 milliliter bag of normal saline at 0500. If the pump is set to run at 100 milliliters per hour, milliliters per hour, at what time would the nurse expect the bag to run out? And remember, so now this is just like from the last question, you, you now know that pump that pumps run in milliliters per hour. So basically, the, the pump is set to run at 100 milliliters per hour. At what time would the nurse expect the bag to run out? This is relatively a simple question. You just have to know how to do it. So what we have here is a total of 1,000 milliliters. And our pump is running at 100 milliliters per hour. So basically what you could do is if you took your total 1,000 milliliters 
and you divided it by the 100 milliliters, that would give you how many hours it would take for the bag to run. So, if the pump runs at 100 milliliters per hour, and we have a total of 1,000 milliliters, I mean, think about it, even if you did this on your hands, 100 milliliters, that's one hour. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000 milliliters, 10 hours. So now what the question is asking though, is what time would we expect the bag to run out? Well, we started it at 0500, that's five o'clock in the morning. Uh, 10 hours later, that's all it's asking. So 10 hours later after 0500, what would the time be? And we know that it would be 1500 or 3 p.m. And if you didn't know how I got that, it's simple. You're just starting at 0500, or you could think about it as 5 a.m. 10 hours later, what time would it be? So basically 5 a.m. plus 10 hours is gonna give you that. All right, guys, now this is a really wordy question here. So let's, let's go ahead and go through it. The 10 a.m. meds scheduled for your patient include Keflex 2 grams in 100 milliliters of a 5% dextrose solution. According to the pharmacy, this preparation should be administered in 30 minutes. The IV tubing on your unit delivers 10 drops per milliliter. What is the correct rate of flow in drops per minute? This is a whole lot of information, a whole lot of extra filler, as I like to call it, that it's a lot of information that is not necessary or pertinent to this question that is simply put there to sort of get you off track. So let's go through it. What we need to worry about here is drops per minute. Okay, what we have is a thousand milliliters. It needs to be administered over 30 minutes and your unit delivers tubing, which delivers 10 drops per milliliter. That is all we need to answer this question. Look at all this extra nonsense. 5% dextrose solution, Keflex, two grams, who cares, right? Get to the bottom of it. <laughs> so this is the information that we need. And what we wanna know is how many drops per minute. That's the ultimate question. So what we know we have, the tubing delivers 10 drops per milliliter. And what we have is 100 milliliters. Right? So if it's 10 drops for one milliliter, how many drops for the entire bag? So we do it like this. 10 drops in one milliliter. We have a total of 100 milliliters and it's on the bottom. So we put it on the bottom and we want to know the total drops. Cross multiply, X times one is X. 10 times 100 is 1,000. A thousand total drops is what we know. So, so essentially in that 100 milliliter bag of fluid, it contains a total of a thousand drops. That's basically what that means. So we know how many drops we have. Now we need to figure out the minutes. Well, it needs to be administered over 30 minutes. So if we administer this 1000 drops over 30 minutes, how many drops per minute. So all you're gonna do is simply divide 1,000 by 30, and 1,000 divided by 30 gives you 33, and it's 0.333, we just round down to 33 drops per minute. Because whenever you divide it by 30, the 30 goes into the 1,000 33 times, leaving you with just the minute on the bottom, and that's the answer to your question. So Becky, you're the one who requested this. This is like a picture perfect question in regards to what you were wondering about. You know, there's so much extra information and it's hard to figure out what exactly you need to know. Look at that. We knew from the beginning drops per minute is what we needed. And that's what I would suggest to you guys. Begin to get in the habit of looking at a question and deciphering what's really important. You can read it, but don't get so wrapped up in all the numbers. 10 a.m., two grams, 5% dextrose. It's, it's a bunch of nonsense. Really uh, do a bunch of practice questions and get in the habit of, of uh, figuring out what is important, what you need to know. And as you do more of these questions, as you do more IV pump questions, as you do more drop uh, per minute questions, you'll begin to understand immediately what they're wanting from you. All right, guys, and the last question that I want to give you is a reconstitution question. 
For our order, we have Protonics 60 milligrams IV. Our supply is Protonics 100, or sorry, 1,000 milligrams, and uh, it says to reconstitute it with 10 milliliters of normal saline for a total concentration of 100 milligrams per milliliter. And the question asks, how many milliliters should the nurse give? This can be kind of confusing, and I understand this is actually one of the types of questions, these reconstitution questions, this is one of the types that actually gave me problems when I first started. What we know is that the order is asking for 60 milligrams. That's what our patient needs to receive, okay? Now we have protonics, 1,000 milligrams, reconstitute with all of this for a concentration, that's what you need. So whenever you are answering reconstitution questions, what you need, one, is what is the order asking for? And two, what is the total concentration? Those are the two important things that you need in order to answer this question. So our order is 60 milligrams and our concentration is 100 milligrams per ml. And we want to know how many milliliters should the nurse give? So let's go as we've been doing. We have 100 milligrams in one milliliter and our order is for 60 milligrams. And since milligrams is up top, we write it up top here and we want to know how many milliliters. So X, cross multiply 100 X and then 60 times one is 60 equals 60. We're gonna divide both sides by that 100 leaving us with just X on the left, and it equals 0 0.6 milliliters. And that is how you would answer a reconstitution question. Remember, you need the order information, 60 milligrams, and you need your overall concentration of 100 milligrams per milliliter. And from there, it's just answering it as a simple dosage calculation as we've been doing this entire time. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe down below if you are not already a follower of mine. Uh, I'm, I'm constantly putting out these educational videos. It's a whole series I have. It's the Made Easy series, and I'm trying my best to help you guys and give back to you guys. That's the whole purpose of my channel. As always, it's Nurse Bass soon to be, and also make sure to share this video with a friend. If you're in nursing school and you've got, uh, you know, share it with your classmates if they're struggling. This. I hope was helpful. Nurse Bass, soon to be, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.